What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Uh, should I bother you guys with an intro? Is that something you guys would like? I think intros are just pointless. I think it's stupid. And I skip through almost every intro I ever watch. So, without further ado, the white boy hair specialist is in the house. And uh, this is actually pretty typical hair of most Caucasian people. And it's fairly curly on top, but sort of fine. And yeah, let's just get into it, man. So you guys know how I do it. All right, so... Uh, first things first, something I don't show a lot in a lot of videos, which Ant the Barber shows a lot, is the fact that I comb it out and kind of check and see what's going on. However, he's been my client for a long time and this is no surprise really uh, what I'm about to do. He usually waits about this long in between haircuts and you guys see what he's going to look like at the end. So this is going to be a pretty big transformation. So uh, we're taking the one and one half across the back and the sides. And if you guys are slowing down uh, in your process or if things are taking you extra time or you feel like you need to pick it up um, you want to pick it up in the areas that are easy so it's very easy to debulk especially with this machine um, knock it out and that way we can get down to business with the blend so that there's just you know everything that's easy needs to happen fast so your electric shaver easy um, skin line easy clipper over comb uh, it will become easy for you. However, uh, this is the place where you might in all likelihood be struggling, uh, but that's fine. That's phase two of the blend. Phase one, we just want to knock out this skin line, get this in there properly, and um, you know, just keep it moving. So one thing that I do is uh, I always I always use the five zero. So I know that somebody's going to ask me this if you guys have a um, trimmer that will work as well. So you can use a trimmer or you can use a five zero, but we need to get down to the closest length that we can get without shaving and bald because um, we actually are going to shave and bald with the electric shavers and we want to make sure that the jump that we take in between the electric shavers and the skin is very small. So we're, we're going to make a very small jump and that's what's going to make this blend come out smooth and easy because uh, with this type of hair, very easy to make mistakes, very easy to show mistakes. It's going to pick up every little thing that you do. So if there was ever a concern that you guys had about putting in a harsh skin line, um, this would be the time to make sure that your, your tools are lined up properly and you're not gonna have trouble getting it out. Most people are gonna have trouble removing a harsh skin line if they bang the electric shaver directly into that 5-0 line. Uh, I've told you many times, that's a no-no. There's no reason to do that. We want to make sure we stop just before that line and blend that in so that everything is looking perfect in between those two spots. So I don't even really concern too much about this hair around the ear because I know I'm going to shave it off anyways with the straight razor. So I'll just knock out some of this debulk with the clip rover comb on this side, give myself a rough draft to get started with, and we'll, uh, we'll get it going from there. So lifting out, moving up, moving away, getting some of that hair from the bang section away from me. I definitely don't want to accidentally cut that. We don't want to make that mistake. We just want to make sure that we got a rough draft just so that I got pretty much the shape that I want. I'll begin kind of connecting that 1.5 to the scissors on top. And uh, this is kind of how, how we deal with this. A lot of you guys ask me, like, how do I connect absolutely a skin fade into some long lengths on the top well this is one of the ways that you can do it um, knowing how to do clip over comb makes this process so much easier because if i was to go in there with the two and the three and the four and the five and the four the three and just it'll become a mess so you know if you guys aren't practicing this technique go get yourself a mannequin um, one or two mannequins should do it it should give you an idea of what to do and um, that's that's going to be it after I'm done with that clip rubber comb, I'll wet it down. I'll push all that hair forward so I can see any heavy weight lines. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna begin doing my scissor over comb. So pretty much, I've gotten this sides connected to the top quite well uh, before I even begin my blend. And this is kind of cool because if you've sort of addressed the sparietal area, if you've already addressed this, then you know when you're doing your blend that you don't need to be up there with them short lengths. Like you don't need to be up there messing it up. So you'll kind of be trying to figure out now, how am I going to get from skin uh, to, to that length? You know how you're going to get there and you know how much space you got to get it done. So hop it in there with the electric shaver. As you can see, 
Uh, there's still a little bit of weight up there in the Prattle Ridge, but the connection has been made. It's looking pretty good, and uh, pretty soon we're gonna get into the blend. And you guys have seen me use this example a few times on my live feeds, which of course I invite you guys to join me, ask me any questions you want, whatever you're struggling with. And we're gonna begin using the C motion. And I like to grip the clipper on the sides and kind of kind of move my wrist and my fingers simultaneously. So if I'm just going to grip it normally in the handshake grip, that's one thing. But when I'm rocking my C motion, I like to almost hold it right underneath the lever and rock with my fingers just back here, but I'm maintaining contact on the scalp. Notice how uh, people talk about flicking out as if flicking out actually means leaving the head. The only time I really leave the head is to check to see what what um, what my cut, what change my cut has made. And I began with the clipper in the open position when I rocked the C motion, and I began closing it, gradually moving a little bit lower, gradually moving a little bit lower, and uh, closing it. And uh, of course, we we went into detail on this a million times. I've kind of showed you guys one of my favorite ways to blend. Something we were talking about last night on the lives too was um, we were we were talking about how you know stretching the skin like the way you see me doing while I'm working with this, it can be very helpful to get the blend. But also, uh, as you work towards the end of the blend and you want to see how it how it's gonna lay, you need to back off of the stretching because. How many times have you stretched the skin, made it perfect, and then watched it snap right back into position and it wasn't so perfect? Plenty of times, I'm sure. I skipped the half, I moved right to the one, and um, you know, that was a pretty good move here because you can kind of see that this, this blend is really coming together pretty well without even using that half step. And uh, when I go back in with the half step, there's gonna be very minimal to do. So what I've essentially done was I trapped the blend I trapped it in between the one open, one closed, and the half. So now I can come up underneath with the half, knowing about how high I can go based on how high I went with my one closed. So you're pretty safe to come up with the with the half open um, into that one closed. So I still had a little bit of weight towards the front, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit. And uh, this, is, this is part of what makes you good at cutting this hair is just to understand when to back off, when to use texturizing shears, when to maybe use your other shears, maybe when to go back to clipper over comb. All of this is what makes you good and consistent at this. So just giving yourself that extra pad, giving yourself that extra uh, step if you have to is, is what you're gonna have to do. So you're just gonna have to be patient and let this blend kind of work its, work its way out. Let the tools do the work uh, don't try to do too much just little by little step back a little bit and don't be afraid because if you if you mess something up It's ultimately going to take you more time so that in, that little bit of impatience that you feel at times um, it, it could be causing you more time uh, in essence before this is this is said and done so You see me stepping my way back down through this cut. I'm, I'm moving that clipper blade in uh, just a little bit at a time and every time I bump that lever down I wind up a little bit lower than I was in the previous step. So uh, One of the clippers. It's really easy to do this with the gamma ergo If this is in the wide open position when I put in the line, I'll just click it once you guys can hear the click You can see the click uh, It seats just perfectly stay a little bit lower Maybe a quarter inch lower click it stay a little little lower quarter inch lower click it and all the way on until you're down at your bottom length and we, uh, we definitely wanna make sure that our tools are set up properly and that everything is zero gap properly uh, so, we're, so that we're not gonna struggle. When we get down to these lengths, everything should blend together smoothly. Your electric shaver should lead into a very close trimmer. Your close trimmer should, should lead into your closed taper on your clippers and that should be another close length. So a lot of barbers like to work with a couple different clippers and a couple different trimmers. I myself, I like to work with at least two, sometimes three trimmers. One, I keep it like, like my jujitsu. They're super, super sharp. I would never use them on kids. I use them in situations when A, I can't get a skin fade out, or B, I really need a sharp lineup. These are, these are my, my hitters, right? And, and I use the absolute hitters for that one. And then I use my wall detailers for kind of like, I got them set back a little bit. They're good for kids. I remove bulk with them. I don't care about them. I could care less if I dropped them. Uh, they make no difference to, to any real quality. I'm just trying to remove weight with them. So, you know, that's my setup. A lot of people use two different clippers. 
uh, where they might have a clipper with a taper blade on it and a clipper with a fade blade on it. If you're struggling to get a line out, maybe you want to try that fade blade. Um, you know, if you're working through a regular cut, maybe maybe that taper blade will work out better for you. So on this side, always an easy side, always a hard side. On this side, I actually had to go all the way up into the number two, and uh, I did it with the two open, two closed. We're gonna finish this off with some some texturizing shear work, and um, it's it's pretty much it's gonna be coming together. Um, just just a good time for you guys to get active in the comment section. Ask me any questions you might have about this cut, um, anything that you might have might have seen here that you know you struggle with. Uh, leave it in the comments below, and I'll definitely I'll definitely be getting back to you. Uh, like I said, we used this quite a few times on the live. We we went through this haircut a few times, and it's very common for me to uh, kind of go back and go back over the clipper over comb portion just to make sure I got everything laying right after it's dry, after it's kind of partially styled, or once you see it come together, uh, you'll really get a better idea kind of for what to do. So um, other than that, I really appreciate you guys kind of kind of coming in here and hanging out and building this community. And the, the lives have been jumping off, man. You guys have been joining in on a lot of those. It's been awesome. And uh, we've been doing a lot of giveaways and stuff here too. So uh, please, you know, hit that hit that bell, hit that subscribe button. I'm really, really trying to grind to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, since I started this channel like 10 years ago, uh, it's it's been something I've wanted like super, super bad. All right, you guys, um, this light is clutch, man. It really helps to, to get a much better picture. So for instance, if I take this from up top, you can see that it's messing the fade up. It's not gonna look right. But if I if I put this just underneath, you can kind of see the kind of kind of look that you can get. So you can like play around with this and your cell phone at the same time. And uh, you'll come up with some really cool pictures, um, kind of similar to the one that I'm about to post that I just used this light for. So the other cool modes, there's a lot you can do with these lights. I put the link in the description for this one, but there's also cheaper, more affordable options as well. Wait a minute, before you guys go, I wanna invite you to hit that bell, hit subscribe, and stick around because we're gonna go live all the time. It's far more interactive, it's a lot more intuitive, you'll learn a lot more, and uh, we'll go through this video and many others as we continue to grow. We build off each lesson from the last week, so don't miss out on that opportunity. It's free, it's fun, and we're gonna have a good time and a lot of guests, and we do giveaways. So I encourage you guys, hit subscribe. Other than that, man, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.